So there I was. The mass of protesters coming, converging this way. The police in their riot gears readying their ammunition. Stuck in a moment, not of my choosing, disoriented to what even to do next. I mean, should I run? Should I walk up? to the officials that were perpetrating the violence to come and hope that my whiteness, my foreignness would save me. I was standing there with some other tourists trying to figure out what to do when a woman, a local walked up to us and just looked us up and down and said, you shouldn't be here. We readily agreed with her. I mean, we didn't feel like we should be there either, but we didn't exactly know how not to be there. And all she said was, come with me. And she turned and started walking. And we decided to take a leap of faith to trust that she was the right guide for that moment. And so we followed her. We followed her walking more than three miles through the city to her truck. A truck that then we piled into and she drove us to the bus station that we needed to get to just in time for our bus to make it up island to meet our friend. It was miraculous and ordinary. Ordinary in the sense that people care about those who are not their blood. Miraculous that it happened in that moment, as so many times it does not. Sometimes we need help from others to get our bearings, to find our map orienting to where we are and where we should be and where we shouldn't be. This series is all about guides, all about practices, maps, and tools that oriented us. Gretchen earlier shared how our senses can be this powerful tool to ground us in the reality of now, to experience here, to practice that hidden discipline of alertness, to find then familiarity so that we do not feel alien from our word. I mean, even the pots and the pans have given up their aloofness and see the good in you at last. The focus in on our senses literally calms our nervous system down, moving us out of the flight, fright, freeze, response the anxiety provokes in our bodies, these biological processes that by necessity disconnect us from the answers to important questions like where we are, what is true, when we are, and what we can do, of who we are, but most importantly, who we can and are called to be. Of course, there is other orienting forces than our senses. There is that interior grounding, that inner compass that Reverend Karen spoke about that is evoked in that song, voice still and small, that some might call our gut, that others call our soul, or the spark of the divine, or the call of God. The connection to that voice, still small, deep and mighty, that is within all, that tells us a tale of courage, belovedness, and truth in a language that is ours alone, fueling us to be here and now, to trust that here, that we are in fact enough, that everything is waiting for us, even here, even now. The history of the Supreme Court in this nation is a mixed and blotted one. Blotted by the racism and bigotry of the minds of some of those on the bench. Blotted by its reflection of the dehumanization and colonial conceptions embedded in the Constitution and other documents they are called to interpret. This is not to say that luminaries have not visited its benches, they have. And it is not to say that its role is not powerful, for it is but its role has always been to be the arbiter of law, which is at times and unfortunately 
more of the times than we would hope, distinct from being an arbiter of justice. We cannot depend on the Supreme Court, nor one person for salvation to save any of us. Salvation is a collective endeavor. Chief Justice John Roberts, during his confirmation, was, would, was asked if he would side with the little guy if he were confirmed to be on the court. He replied, if the Constitution sided with the little guy, I would. But if the Constitution sided by the big guy, I would too. Law is, of course, distinct from justice. As Howard Zinn writes, it would be naive to depend on the Supreme Court to defend the rights of poor people, women, people of color, dissenters of all types. Those rights only come alive when citizens organize, protest, demonstrate, strike, boycott, rebel, and violate the law in order to uphold justice. Because the truth of the progress the court grants is that when culture shifts, the court follows. That when culture shifts, the court follows. Zinn continues, the right to an abortion did not depend on the Supreme Court's decision in Roe v. Wade. It was won before that decision all over the country by grassroots agitation that forced states to recognize the right. If the American people, who by a great majority favor that right, insist on it and act on it, no Supreme Court decision can take it away forever. When culture shifts, the court follows. The fundamental changes needed in our country will never be nor ever were decided on the benches of those hallowed halls. Jurists can certainly alleviate much suffering, make the roads towards justice smoother, or add devastation to the lives of those subject to its rule. But never forget their power is derived from us derive from our work to bend the arc of history towards justice and trust the court to follow. So just breathe. Here is enough. There is enough wisdom and courage, lust for liberty, enough despair breeding hope, enough calls to action, calls to prayer, calls to stillness, calls to love right here in the mess of this moment contains all the constituent parts to make our lives a blessing, a revolution for shit is just another word for compost after all. Here is where the way may seem lost. Here is where we found each other. Here is where love reminded us that the thread that reaches beyond, of the thread that reaches beyond time and place, which whispers its truth in the stillness of our, stone, our souls, beloved, beloved, beloved. Here is where we find love nestled amongst the hopeless and the despairing, for that is where it is needed most. So be here. Find your way through your senses, through stillness, through your practices that we will take up together to be here. To here in this place, here in the feelings, here in the thoughts, here in the moment. Let yourself rest in the intimacy of the place that surrounds you finding the stillness where truth can come calling, let yourself resound in harmony with others as we shift culture, others alive in their role. For even as the world unravels and turns at the same time, the next world becomes possible because everything is waiting for you. Everything, everything, everything. Amen and blessed be.